Hello, it's Matthew Williams here with a quick video to say. Uh, got a first look at the Mavic 2 today. A friend of mine purchased one and he set it up with its new firmware. And then I came along and he had his first flight, as did I, of the Mavic 2. And this is a video to say first impressions and I found some tricks and little tips that may help you. Uh, some things that I don't think DJI are going to keep in there very long because they didn't want people to have these functions. And uh, also some things that I absolutely hate um, about the new Mavic 2 Pro. Probably have to get used to it and live with some of these features, but DJI, what were you thinking? So I mean by this bag, I'll be glad when I get the other one. Mm-hmm. Right here, we're here today at Uffington White Horse, which is up that way, with Tim. And Tim, being some sort of rich person, he's what? got he's got this new thing called a Mavic 2. There's a money no object, so he's uh, he's doing he's doing really well, but he can't get it out of this bag because this bag was designed for a Mavic 1. So that's the first piece of instructional on this video is uh, yeah. the bags don't work. They never did, even on the Mavic 1. So here we are. He's giving birth, as you can see. Yeah. Giving it's birth. A it's, it's a, a bit of a push, but if we give him, you know, breathe, push, oh. breathe, breathe, <coughs> push. Blimey. Oh, push. Come on. Push, push. I tell you what helped me in the past, to take all the stuff out of the pockets, right, and take the battery out, and then suddenly you, you get all this room that you Hang never on, knew you let had. Me, uh, might, yeah, might help if I took that out. Yeah, right, take the yeah. controller out and the battery out, and then suddenly it starts to want to go. It's because it... Here it comes. There we go, we're giving birth yeah. there. How about it, that? It, it's go a boy. Blimey. It's a boy. Actually, it's not as a bitch. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Cut that bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. As you can see the Hasselblad camera on the front there. Yeah. That's all that counts. Yep. Forget the rest Hence of it, just has the black camera. Pro for the... Right, got a good view there? Yeah, yeah, it's a good view. Okay. One controller. Yeah. Basically, it's a two-tone controller. Um, there's something on this that Matt has, actually doesn't like. I'll let him explain to you about it. Mm-hmm. Well, the, bo the bottom line is, it's slightly greyer than... <laughs> It's slightly greyer than other ones we've seen in the past, but what, what you've got is now a nice thing. So they've given you something and they've taken something away. So they've given you tripod mode as well as sports. So you've got a three-way switch, which I've not heard anybody talk about on YouTube so far. But what they've done here is this controller is no longer rotary. It's just a, sp it's a spin sprung load. So when you let go, it springs back to the middle. Let go, spring back to the middle. And what it allows you to do is you can switch up and down one push at a time and it seems linked to the iris mode not to the shutter mode to iris i haven't found any way to change that yet so basically you can go down iris down iris down iris down iris down iris or up 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 but you can't just hold it and it go click 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 or hold it and it goes click 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 that doesn't work oh can you believe it and you can't just roll it to go click 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 you can't roll that so that's gone now i think that's a definite from me but i guess it's something we'll have to learn to live with maybe they'll change it so you can hold it and it will go click 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 or hold it because i don't know about people flying and they want to go click 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 like that. I mean, it's just come on. We're we're professional enough to know to, how to use a rotary control. Um, yeah, not much else has changed. Uh, pretty much the same. Just the new T, P, and S switch on the controller. So that's quite nice. And we've got a nice set of new propellers here. Yeah, and you can put the 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 sticks away so that it goes into storage. The sticks come off and they store the same as on the, I think the Air, Mavic Air, Mavic Air. yeah. So that looks good. 
you can see one fully extended there. Fold up like the other ones used to. So, and they also attach the same way as the older ones did. There's my goggles. Of course, Matt will probably tell you it's better than mine. They probably are, but hey, these work fine. OcuSync. And they say that these work with OcuSync too as well, which um, hopefully I've got the right firmware on it because I did see something mentioned about you might have to update the firmware for them. But that did say the race edition, so I'm not absolutely sure about that. So what, yep. what's changed is there's an upward angle on, on this, so there's a little twist up. And that's about it, really. They look pretty much the same as the platinum ones, but there's just a little, just a little there. quiff on the end. The, the, the drone, as it stands, is pretty much the same as the original. The legs fold in, the arms fold in. The only thing that's really changed in terms of a major redo is the, the lens is now different. Um, the way it fixes on up here is a different fixing. So basically, if you can see up, up there, there's a spinner there and it's held on two sides, so that's more stable. Obviously you've got the one inch sensor, which is in here, inside this body, and it's actually got a bit of heat sinking there to, to keep it cool. Um, so, good range of travel. Look, it goes all the way to the side, which the other one didn't do. So this one can actually, you know, take quite a bit of turn. I'm sure you're not gonna to want to use that much, but what's different as well is that they've recessed the, uh, the, the actual um, elastics that hold the spring loading mechanism so all the elastics are hidden out of sight now and it looks like it won't come out if you hit the ground or if you hit something hard it looks like it will actually make contact with the inside of this and that will stop it getting wrenched off but we'll see so that moves around by there but there's also an extra piece there's down here I don't know if you can see it down in that bit there's actually an extra arm and an extra bit of spring loading that that if you move forwards you see the springs moving can you see the springs so there's an extra spring loading down there so that's new there's no venting going through there used to be a vent in the back here in where this is turning around so there used to be a vent inside there yeah. now the vents are on the side and they're actually ducted in so they ducked in that way and then they come out the back here so the venting comes out of the backside there and there's no metal like there used to be metal on the underneath of the Mavic now this has been turned over to sensors so you've got infrared sensors you've got LED lights for landing at night you've got the two cameras for the uh, vision of uh, you know collision avoidance and there's some more little holes this is the link button is under there little link and it flashes and then on this side you've got um, where you put your SD card in so that that goes in there and then the USB is up here so there's a USB connector because it's actually got 8 megs of RAM but it's unfortunately it's the USB-C so not entirely standard so you'll have to use USB-C connectors to go to to your devices the battery is bigger it's actually deeper so you can't use your old batteries the light has changed so if you press it you now get uh, coloured LEDs that go around like Simon says in four quadrants so uh, and then you've got sensors on the top, sensors on the sides, both sides, Set two sensors on the back, so they obviously think you're going to be really stupid because they put two sensors on the back, and two sensors on the front, but only one on the side and the side, two on the bottom. So yeah, that's the difference. Now, when it's turned on, things to look out for as well, brighter LEDs for the reds, they're definitely a lot brighter and they act more like strobes, the way they flash, and the uh, the greens and the reds are definitely a lot brighter, so that's something to look out for uh, when using it at night. But um, other than that, it, um, it feels like it's got more gradations on the motors, and it is a higher, it's not 3S, it's 4S now. And if you feel this, it feels very fine. It's like there's lots more gradations in there, so it's ding, 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 whereas on the, on the Mavic, it was like clunk, clunk, clunk. This is like ding, 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 so it's a lot finer around there. But that's just the things that I'm picking up, um, you know, straight away. But uh, let's see it put together, and uh, he's going to take it for its maiden flight, very first flight, and I hope I'm recording. One thing Matt 
failed to say, which I need to say, because I'm glad that I get to say this. Which you'll have to say again because of fucking ice cream van. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, oh, I'm not wanking, I'm milking a cow, by the way. So Right, this is especially more important, I think, for people that had um, an iPhone. If you look at the old controller, the Mavic, one and open it up when you put your phone in people that had um, iPhones normally the home key yeah you couldn't get into it because it would be or they put it on an angle you look at the new one ah. Matt hasn't spotted that one if you look at these it's got a slot cut out so now you now put your phone in and you can reach your home key. So I thought I'd just mention that one. Mm. That one as well. You didn't notice that one, did you? Or did you and kept quiet? I don't know. He's right, I didn't <laughs> notice that because I don't have an iPhone. Nor no, would me, ever have an iPhone. Me either. <laughs> um, but that's just... Gives you a little bit extra space, that's all. In fact, if he's talking about iPhones, I've just erased what he told me because I don't want to know. You do the same thing, push and then hold. And it comes up with a new app. Oh, I do apologise. That's alright. There you go. It's checking the version. It says it's OK. Uh, RC connected. and a device. and a camera view. OK. Now I'm going to turn on. The Mavic 2, pushing that button the same as you did, hold and then push it, uh, push it, then hold, and it does its little dance. It's quite a violent uh, dance as well. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of just move to one side. It, it throws that that um, one-inch sensor and bangs on the end. I notice, so it's quite a violent dance this time. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, on the map seems fine to me. Um, right, is it going to let us fly with that on it or not? Well, I think you'll have to put your propellers on first, but... Well... This is, this is, if you want to go far. <laughs> if you want to walk around with it and use it as a steady cam, you can quite happily keep it uh, with the propellers off. Okay. Yeah, fine. <laughs> okay, propellers is they're exactly the same. As you can see, there's one with a white circle on and one with none, and they correspond with the arms. As they did before. Right. Black to black. Put it on. Right, that's the white one. Turn it. And the black one, turn it on and turn. Um, I like to open them up a bit, just so they're all ready open to go. Right, uh, okay. We now can change our aperture on this one. ISO, I'm going to keep to 100. Um, aperture. You can see there at the moment it's on 2.8, shutter speed is on 160. Yeah. So first thing we found out is that trying to connect with OcuSync 2 to these goggles, they wouldn't work on mine and they wouldn't work on his, which means that you've got to have the latest firmware upgrade for this. Which doesn't really help because I found that on the latest firmware upgrade on this it wasn't working with some of my other drones So I had to use older firmware to get it to work with my other drones, but apparently you must have the newer firmware on there So I question whether or not that's going to work I hope it will but it didn't in the past because DJI have a habit of making you cripple things in order to go forward So let's see and then we're having to plug it in with a wire now because we can't get the OcuSync to work. So that's, you know, it's not very straightforward in that respect, but um, uh, I am getting an image. Let's have a little look. And I should be able to change the settings now. So I can brighten it, but one stage of iris at a time. 
So I'm going to record this now. I'm going to say record on the... It's not letting me record. So it's not allowing me to record, which is great. Why? I don't know. And what may happen as well. Can I take photos? No. No photos. No record. So can I record through the goggles? So I can switch to camera mode and I can take a photo and I can switch to I can switch it to record. Or can I? It's not it's not recording when I'm saying start record, but it will allow me to take a photo. So this is interesting. So <laughs> interesting experience, but we, we can change the exposure manually here, which I'd rather do myself rather than having to use the iris up and down which gives you a latitude of 2.8 to 11 and then that's it so you can't change the shutter this is iris this is not shutter which is like hello dji what were you thinking but um okay i'm sure I'm, i think they're going to change that i i got a funny feeling enough complaints are going to come in about this being iris only and they're going to change it but we'll see uh there's the other thing which is the, the drones, the new drones, including my Phantom 4, won't allow you to go beyond 30 meters until you connect it to a mobile phone. This is the problem, you see, because they say it works with the goggles, so you can put the goggles on and go flying. Not true. You've got to put the whole thing on, connect it to a phone, then disconnect and then connect to the goggles, because you can't just turn this on, turn the goggles on, and go flying. You can't do that anymore, because DJI decided that for a security feature, you had to connect the phone so it would talk to the phone, record and log who you are and your details, yeah? Then you can connect OcuSync, then you can go flying, which I think is rather sad, but it's the, it's the new way forward from DJI and everybody's having to suffer this at the moment. So if you're watching DJI... Yeah. And this is, this is as I was saying, you know, now he's got it connected to his phone and he's got to let it sync with the phone first before we can go flying. Maybe you can... Or do you have to have it connected to both? You can't, have, you can't have this connected at the same time as the lead because if you have them both connected, one knocks the other one out. So you can either have your phone or you can have the lead. You can't have the lead and the phone because DJI designed it that way that you couldn't connect two things at once. But you can have a lead and you can have the OcuSync or you can have, you know, um, a wire to the headset and not use your phone. You can do it that way. But it doesn't flash record. No flashing record there. Press it again. Still no flashing record. What's that? Disconnect the goggles. Disconnect. What about now? Now it says record. So you can record when you don't have the goggles connected. That's interesting, isn't it? Ah, so they've designed it in such a way that it's not really standard with any of the other stuff unless you upgrade the firmware. You're going to upgrade the firmware whether you like it or not because they've designed it not to work unless you upgrade the firmware. So all your own drones won't give you things like height and speed, which wasn't working properly because the newer firmware didn't work properly. So I'm guessing this is going to be a royal pain in the ass with my old drones now. But anyway, there we go. So yeah, you've got to have your phone connected. So shall I just take my, shall I just take the goggles off and just say, forget it? Because I can't fly with the goggles. We've got to go home. We've got to do it. We've got to update the firmware. This is not going to happen. Great. Okay. <sighs> We can't use goggles today, we've got to use his phone, so I'm going to fly the old-fashioned way of looking in the screen. Which luckily, the sun has gone down so I can actually see the screen, so we're not going to crash into anything, that's nice. So let's give it a go. Drone is over there, and let's uh, Don't know see. How much power it's got. Oh. It's got about 64%, uh, so it's got a lot. So let's go for a little fly. Are we in focus? Uh, how's the exposure? Exposure could probably let's get this a bit brighter. There we go. Get a bit brighter. So let's start recording. Recording on there, so recording. Okay, ready to go. Take off. The low point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Two thousand years later. Here's a piece of footage taken with no colour mode turned on. This is um, Ultra HD, 24 frames per second, and you can definitely see a lot of noise 
in the blacks and dark shadow areas. This is slowed down and we're pixel peeping at 400% uh, percent zoom and 30% speed and you can see there's quite a lot of noise swimming around there. This is We've boosted the exposure up to just show you just how much noise there is. So there's definitely a lot of noise going on in the uh, in the darkened areas but if you want to push it down if you want to push the shadows down and the blacks down you can kind of hide some of it but it is still a noisy picture that you probably uh, in lower areas of darkness you'd want a noise clean with uh, neat video and we're outdoors now you can see that uh, pretty much the noise isn't there as long as you've got light enough areas so 100 ISO we're mostly shooting on here and less specified but you can see that uh, the grain isn't too bad let's zoom it in right we're zoomed in at 400% now the left hand side is ungraded and the right hand side has the Heron LUT so this is designed for the Mavic it's not specifically designed for the Hasselblad yet but um, it's an it's not a bad match kind of see the grain in the darker areas and uh, no grain in the illuminated areas gives you a good idea And now you can see on the left hand side we retain the 400% zoom and on the right hand side is the 100% one to one. And this contains the Heron LUT. And it's important to remember that everything here is shot with a H265 codec which is definitely better if you don't want to have the shuddering codec of the 264 which looked very bad for clouds and things moving across the ground shadows when the shadows moved they used to jitter so 265 is definitely better in that respect so now we'll move on to semi mid tones definitely start to see a little bit of noise noise cancer on the mid-tones and now we've got a bit of movement to see how the codec handles movement and a bit of moderate slow movement What I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to push the colours really hard, the whites, the contrast, and we're going to have a little look at what that does to the sky. So let's zoom in and see what we've got going on. Okay, we're back to zero on all the highlight shadows, exposure, contrast. I'm going to dial down the highlights and you'll see what we thought was lost has actually got a lot of detail in it. So there was quite a bit there. So that's the highlight and let's take the whites down. Okay, and shadows and shadows. Still a lot of detail there. And we can even push the black down without crushing it too much, which you'd crush a lot more if it was uh, if it was 8-bit so highlights and you can see here the center area has been graded the outer bits have not been graded so just to give you an example 
and uh, this before the master channel was set the sky was completely white you couldn't see the sun so after the master channel's been set we've brought the highlights down and then we've done the grade in the middle and you can actually see the kind of round area of the sun which is quite nice right i'll put it there so we get that and over there right then I've decided that even though we've got really expensive goggles, me and him, we can't use goggles today. We've got to use his phone. So I'm going to fly the old fashioned way of looking in the screen. Which luckily, the sun has gone down so I can actually see the screen. So we're not going to crash into anything. That's nice. So let's give it a go. Drone is over there. And let's uh, I don't know see. How much power it's got. Oh. It's got about 64%, uh, so it's got a lot. So let's go for a little fly. Okay, ready to go. Take off. So there we are, we got our image on the on the screen. Let's get my fingers and thumbs, so I don't want to teach you bad habits. So what I want to do now is, is just change the settings so that we can see the difference in... Ah, we cannot, when we're recording, all the colour modes and everything are greyed out. Now I've been able to change them in the past on other drones, but I can't change them when I'm recording. So I'll have to switch off the recording. Now they come back in H265. I'm going to move down I'm going to take the, um, the sharpness to zero and I'm going to start recording with the sharpness at zero. So that's zero. So this is the sharpness at minus one. So we've got minus two on the contrast, minus two on the color, but minus one on the sharpness, which has in the past made the noise cleaning kick in, which we don't like. So there's the noise cleaning probably kicking in. Let's have a look at, well, we are able to stay in this setting screen. So we can go minus two, so that's minus two. So I'll, in order to know it's minus two, I'm just gonna go left, right, left, right. So that's two, so you know that's two. So this is one, so I'm gonna go left, right once. So that's one. Uh, this is zero, that's zero. And then let's go plus one. So plus one, so I'm going to go one, and then plus two, which I'm going to go one, two, one, two, so two. Maybe that's that sharpness too. Can you too. explain that, what you just did? Storage space is full, oh my god! Yeah, keep out of the way of Mr. Microlite, who's up there. But, um, right, so let's have a look at the contrast. So we go to contrast, so we go, that's, mi that's minus one, that's zero, zero contrast. That's plus one, and that's plus two. So yeah, Microlite's coming, but he's, he's well, well above us. We can get down quickly. So there we are, so that's plus two. That's plus one. That's zero. That's minus one, and that's minus two. And you can go to minus three as well. If you want real D-log control, you can go to minus three, minus two. And this is color. So color is minus two. That's minus one. That's zero, that's plus one, that's plus two. So there you go. Yeah, keep out of the way of Mr. Microlite, who's up there. But, um, right, so let's have a look at the contrast. So we go to contrast, so we go, that's, min that's minus one, that's zero, zero contrast. That's plus one, and that's plus two. So yeah, Microlite's coming, but he's, he's well, well above us. We can get down quickly. So there we are, so that's plus two. That's plus one. That's zero. That's minus one. And that's minus two. And you can go to minus three as well. If you want real D-log control, you can go to minus three, minus two. And this is color. So color is minus two. That's minus one. That's zero. That's plus one. That's plus two. So there you go. But there we go. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. That looks pretty good. So, so let's change. What have we got it on? What? What, right, we're on 4K. Now we're going to yep. change down to some of the other modes. So we're going to try okay. 60 FPS yep. on 2.7, yep. 60 FPS on 1080, and we're going to try 1080, 30, and 2.7. So we're okay. going to go through all those modes. So let's stop that first. All right, let's go video format size. So we're going to go, uh, this is full field of view, this is special mode. So 4K at 30 frames a second. 
So there we are, so that's 30 frames a second. So we'll start recording. So that's 4K at 30 frames a second. So in order to know that that's me, I'm gonna go left, right, left, right. So I'm gonna go left, right, left, right, left, right. So that's three left, rights. So that's the 4K full field of view. Stop. And here we have the 4K zoomed in to 400%. It's the same bit of footage as before, but we are zoomed in just to have a look at the grain structure. That. I'm now going to go uh, 2.7K at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to go four movements. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's four movements for me to tell that I'm in 2.7 at 30 frames a second. Okay, so let's move that around. Have a look at the sort of quality. Okay. So I'm gonna go four movements. So I'm gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's four movements for me to tell that I'm in 2.7 at 30 frames a second. Okay, so let's move that around. Have a look at the sort of quality. Okay. Let's try uh, 60 frames a second in 2.7. So there you go. So this is, uh, I'm going to do, um, I'll do three on this one. So three left and right. One, two, one, two, one, two. So that was three. Okay, so we're recording now. Let's do smooth turn. And that's a 60 frames a second. Sounds like that micro light's lurking around. Just keep an eye on him. So let's stop that. There you go. So this is, uh, I'm gonna do, um, I'll do three on this one. So three left and right. One, two, one, two, one, two. So that was three. Okay, so we're recording now. Let's do smooth turn. And that's a 60 frames a second. Sounds like that micro light's lurking around. Just keep an eye on him. So let's stop that and go 1080 at 60 frames a second. So this is 60 frames a second in 1080. So do a slow turn, slow turn. Okay, let's try, um, I didn't identify that one. Let's try 30 frames a second. So this is 60 frames a second in 1080. Do a slow turn, slow turn. Okay, let's try, um, I didn't identify that one. Let's try 30 frames a second, 30. Right, so we're on 30 frames a second. I'm gonna do two turns to identify which one is which. So one, two, one, two, so that's two. Okay, so let's do a slow turn. So we're on 30 frames a second. I'm going to do two turns to identify which one is which. So one, two, one, two. So that's two. Okay, so let's do a slow turn. So now this is the one that I'm a bit concerned about. This is the 120 frames per second in 1080p. And this is at uh, full screen. And you might notice when things move, they're kind of a little bit flickery around the edges um, but when you actually see straight lines then you will really start to see where it gets very messy but if we zoom into 400% as we're doing here um, you can basically see that the bit rate which is 100 megabits is being spread very thin <clears throat> which is why it looks so alive and you know like it's there's noise and mess uh it's not a very good quality signal really and can you see the the straight lines that were going on the white horse and can you see the kind of out of focus quality of the horizon lines and also you've got aliasing which is jagged edges which tells me that it's either pixel binning or it's a lower resolution that they're trying to tell you is 1080p but isn't actually 1080p looks pretty messy 
I'll hand, I'll try hand catching it. I wonder whether it will let me hand catch it. Yeah. Let's see whether it'll let me do it. <laughs> yeah. You got to be, uh, you've got to be quite nifty with that. Well, I've put the shutter up to 160. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's. Uh, but it, it, for, for the um, 160th, 430 it should be 160th or 130th which will be 180 shutter or 360 degree shutter, it's, um, technical terms. But um, what you need to do is to push the ISO up. Now they, they do start at 100, it allows you to do D-log at 100, mm -hmm. which um, is, is interesting. Uh, and it'll only go up to 1600 as D log, so that's 100. So it proves that on D log, mm -hmm. you can do 100 ISO. So they've got rid of that horrible 500 ISO lock that they used to have. Mm -hmm. They'll probably bring that 500 ISO lock back on pretty soon, I would imagine, after they've sold a few of them and they want to screw everybody. They'll put 500 ISO on it, but for the moment, it's a thousand ISO, that's all you can go to, but you can open it fully up 160th. And if you want to get a little bit more out of it, you can go to 130th, which will be. 130 and that'll give you a bit of extra brightness but that looks about okay to fly in twilight and obviously if you want to fly at night should we see if we can go higher on the other modes so what we got here is 1600 oh 1600 sorry not a um, thousand it's 1600 but if you go to let's not have d log m let's go to none right and now what can we do let's have a look yeah, so now you can go up to 6400 now. So if you're in D log M, it'll only allow you to go to 1600, but if you're in any other mode, 6400. So there you go, that's the difference. So let's put it in D log because we want to see what the quality is like that. We'll try it in both. I'll record in D log at 10 bit. So video mode, style. Uh, so we've got plus one, minus two contrast, minus two color. So let's go color mode. D log M, there we are, um, and we've got, oh no, it's a, why is it allowing us to do 6400? Oh no, it's only 1600 now, but hey, we fooled it then. <laughs> it, if you come out of it, it allowed us to do 6400 by not being in that mode, but would it allow us to record or was that photographic mode? If we go photographic mode, photographic mode, it'll allow us to go all the way to 12,800 in photo mode but not in video mode. So let's go back to video mode. That was interesting. I wonder if we could fool it into allowing us to shoot at something like 6400. So let's go back, D log M, none. Go back, go to exposure, take it up to 6400, which you can see is quite bright. Go back to color, go into D log M. Ah, it stayed, look, stayed. Go back, you don't touch it, go, as long as you don't touch it, look, it's at 6400. Can we record? <laughs> Can we record? Record? Oh my God! We found a secret trick! We found a secret trick! <laughs> to fool it, to allow you to have 6400 ISO. That's nice. Like, this video is gonna go viral now, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I found a secret trick! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get flying and, is it right if I take off and have a quick look? Yep, go for it. Okay, so let's have a little look then. So, taking off, clear prop. I didn't turn them on. No, it's oh. water. Right, okay. So let's have a look at the horizon. So let's have a look, street lights. Yeah, not bad. Let's take a focus on, on these points. Yeah, it's allowing us to stay at 6400. Look, that's pretty crazy. So there we go. So let's have a look at uh, a dark, dark is straight down. So let's have a look at 6400 video. I'll tell you which version firmware this is running in a minute because I bet you they'll get rid of that pretty soon. So you can see us down on the ground and it's quite dark at the moment. I mean, you know, um, I wouldn't, I probably have trouble telling, you know, how many fingers somebody was putting up in front of them if they were standing across the way. So let's have a look at what the ISO would be like if we force it back to, s to 1600. If we go down, see it'll only let us go back to 1600. 
So there's 1600. So we found a little trick there. It's very clever. So we're on 1 30th shutter speed. Let's look down at the ground for something dark. Okay, so that's for pixel peepers on the dark. Okay, so uh, now let's try it in a different colour mode. I'm going to try and come out of D-Log M, but I don't think it'll let us do that when we're recording because it's going from 10-bit to 8-bit, but let's try. So let's come into the mode. Uh, no, it's locked out, so I'm going to try it now out of D-Log. So we stop it, we change it back to None. It's very dark now. It's very dark. Uh, let's change the ISO. So we change ISO to... it's on 1600. So you can see it's pretty dark with that one. But you can go 3200. So let's move around. 3200. Oh, so it's record now. So this is um, recording in non D log. 3200 ISO. Let's move around. Let's see whether things are smudging as they move. Smudging or not. Okay, let's try it higher. 6400. Is it smudging when it moves? 6400. There we go. So, yeah, let's stop it. Should we go for a quick fly up to the... Go on, so I'm going to stop it. I'm going to fool it again by going back into D-Log mode. So I'm going to fool it up for... Uh, no, not that one. It's colour mode. D-Log M. There we are. We go back. We're on 6400. Amazing. I can't believe we managed to do that. Right, let's go for a fly. I want to go fly to the to the white horse. Now, it's, it's, I cannot see the white horse at the moment with my eyes. It's too dark. I can see roughly where it is, but I can't see it. So, the camera on this is now seeing better than my eyes, I think. So, let's start recording. So, there we are. So, I'm starting to record. Let's give it a focus point. I'd be surprised if it could focus in this light, actually. But let's go up. I'm interested to see if the horizon rolls. If I top left stick, if the horizon rolls. Does the horizon roll? No, the horizon is not rolling. What about top right stick? So now I'm going top right. Top right stick, does the horizon roll? No, the horizon doesn't roll. What if I give it left stick whilst top right stick? No, the horizon is locked in solid. So it hasn't got the problem that the Mavic has, which is if you fly to the side, like I'm going just left stick now, left stick and turning to the right, left stick and turning to the left, there is no horizon roll or very, very, no, I don't think that is horizon rolling. I'll try to the right. So we'll just come full right, I'll come backwards, I'm right into the back now. Nope, there's no horizon roll. So it's absolutely locked in solid. So there's no problem with the firmware with the horizon roll. So I'll go back to the left. Back to the left. I'll go full round. Full round. Full round. Full round and back to where we were. Which is there no horizon roll problem so it doesn't suffer the horizon issues now it's it's pretty much too dark now to, for me to even make out where the white horse would be in reality and I can see it perfectly on the screen here flying towards us let's see if we can see it on the camera that on there? Let's see if we can see something. Hang on. Lock this because it's uh, rolling back. It's very quiet. Let's turn him round. Get the flashes on the back. It's harder to position when it's flashing. It's easier to see the reds when it's flashing but can't work out where it is so those green flashes are not 
not very helpful because they're not on permanently it means it you know you can't see it till the flashes come on which means it's harder to fly with the flashes going flash flash you know so Can I move this? Yeah, yeah, sure. How would you move it? Pull the pull the oh. thing up. It's locked off, but you know, want to get it. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, I didn't do that. Then it no. came on by itself. Oh, my, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna wait for it to come down, and hopefully it's gonna offer me the chance to land by itself. Hold it down. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> but it is a bit hard when the, the flashes are on because you can't really see where it is in the sky and it goes flash and then disappears again. Flash and it disappears again. So it might be better for those flashes, certainly at a, under a certain height, to kind of, you know, be on more than flashing. Because the red lights I could see really well and the red lights allowed me to bring it in close. But once you turn the back facing to you to do the landing, then suddenly you can't see it so well. So that's something to be thought about, but there we go. So I'll turn him off now. One comes around one today. They don't see things the same. Two walk like two out the door. Then you have